Jackson at Alden Library and today I have two library staff members who have new um, chapters in a book that's just been published called the a Library Assessment Cookbook. Um, so in just a second I'm going to turn it around and let them introduce themselves um, but we're going to hear about what they wrote about and what they're doing with that assessment data um, and just kind of what that process looks like. So I'm going to turn you around and first you're going to see um, Joyce Douglas who works in the stacks. Right. So, Joyce, could you tell us um, your title and what you do here in Alden and like how long you've worked here? Good morning, Jessica. Um, I'm the I'm a library uh, associate. We've changed titles, so I. <laughs> um, I've been here um, 18 years. I've always worked in the stacks, supervising the students that work up there that do the shelving and maintain our inventory there. Okay. Um, so, and you said there are like 15 students who work in the stacks? We have approximately 15 student workers every okay. year. Uh, the majority of them are work-study students. Okay. And that's part of a big, pretty big group of students who work in the library overall, right? We have something like 200 students? Approximately, so, yes. Yeah, so yes. a lot of students are getting their hours in here at the library. And we couldn't do what we do without the students, I don't think. So, um, all right, so your chapter specifically is about um, the work that you did with them. It was assessment of, um, related to that, right? Yes. Okay, so could you um, tell us about it? I've always wanted to do an assessment and <clears throat> was never really able to. And uh, when I um, had a new supervisor, she uh, encouraged me to do this and helped me with this. So I was able to put it together. I wanted to know things like, we put away all these books. How long does it take us to put away a book? How long does it take us to find a book? How long does it uh, take us to go down through a shelf and make sure that everything's in order? Um, is that shelf reading? Yes. Like, okay. We call it shelf reading. Um, the aim of everything is to try to make it as easy for our patrons as possible. So I wanted to look at anything um, that I could think of, unloading a cart just to get it to the temp shelves. Um, and we did this uh, over the summer. All the students uh, had a sheet. They filled out the information. Uh, we compiled our data. and. Um, it came out about approximately what I w thought it was going to. Going to and um, we're able to use this now in upcoming things to help determine, do I really need 15 students? Do mm -hmm. I need more? Do I need less to do the job that we have to do? And uh, we just finished a project um, last summer uh, moving a particular collection, and we were able to project before that about how long it would take us to do it and how much it would cost us to do it. And we've never really done that before. That's great. So you're able to plan with a lot more precision. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we're hoping um, the plan is to do this again spring semester and then probably a couple of years down the road. I'd like to be able to have information uh, from different time periods with different groups of students mm -hmm. uh, to come out with a better average and even better information than we already have. And so by writing that up, other libraries could also probably write or use that kind of strategy right about to measure things. Yes, that's the point of um, the library cookbooks. There's a collection of these that come from ACRL. And the idea is to be able to help other people in your field. It tells who did the project, gives information on how to contact them. So if you have questions, um, you can always contact the people. And I'm looking forward to going through this cookbook and hopefully getting some ideas of other things I'd like to do or that may help me do my job better. And it's very, it's very, um, it's written like a recipe, right, for people yes. who haven't seen this mm -hmm. book before, so you can, yes. you can see it's like literally that it takes the theme all the way. Yes, the, it does. <laughs> kind of, some of them have silly little yes. titles, but yes, it takes the theme all the way through the book. Yes, I like that it's, um, you know, simpler, you know, that it gives you, it's not, you don't have to read a whole chapter to understand what's happening. It's like a survey just right there for you. Most of them are just a couple of pages, some three or four, and they really do have a lot of valuable information. Awesome. Okay. So did you work with Katie on putting yes. that together? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn over here to Katie Matthews, and if you could um, tell us about what you do and then what you also, you have some other chapters in the book as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm Katie Matthews. I'm the head of collections, assessment, and access here at Alden Library. So I work with Joyce to maintain the stacks and the general collections here in the library. I also work with the folks who work um, on Ohio Link um, in circulation and collections assessment. So uh, we do a lot, anything to do with the collections and moving it around and getting it to our patrons, that's our business. So 
Um, it's, it's fun work and it was exciting working on something with one of my co-workers. And the beauty of this book is that it they are short. They're just short recipes, very practical, so folks can implement them quickly and easily in their own libraries. So in addition to uh, the recipe that Joyce and I worked on, there are a couple others in there um, that we put together. I worked with a colleague of mine to write a little assessment plan for outreach activities. So, for example, here at Alden Library, we do a lot of really cool outreach activities. Um, you know, coming up at the end of every semester, we have our finals week activities. We had an amazing event, um, the camp out at Alden to kick off our 24-5 um, with our second floor and fourth floor being open 24 hours a day, five days a week. Um, so when we do activities like that, of course, it takes money, it takes planning time, and so it's helpful to be able to assess the effectiveness of those types of activities so we can communicate to folks outside of the library to let them know that the resources invested in these activities really pay off to help support student morale, student success, that type of thing. So what we did, um, uh, the particular event that we assessed was a welcome back to campus party um, at a campus library and we had students swipe in so we had student ID numbers we had no other information about the student um, and with the student ID numbers we were able to um, tie um, attendance at the library party to different student success, success measures using institutional data. So the students who uh, attended the library party, are they more apt, uh, you know, just descriptively to be uh, students who are first generation students? Do they get good grades? You know, so it kind of helped us to understand who the population uh, for our types of events are so we can reach out to them and then reach out to folks who may, maybe didn't attend the party. Um, but then also it kind of gives us an idea of how did um, attendance at a library event possibly impact a student's experience? Of course, it's hard to tell about causation, but um, certainly when you're building a story of a successful student, understanding their library use is an important part of that. Um, and then uh, there's another recipe in the book that I worked on, um, which sort of incorporated some of the work that I did um, in a former life um, in institutional research. And again, that was just getting into a little more detail about how you can take library data. In this case, it was library circulation data. So using no identifying information about patrons at all, we were able to take ID numbers uh, from library circulation data to sync up uh, with institutional data like GPA, um, you know, students in a course that may have received library instruction and then the corresponding uh, cumulative grade point average for students in that course or the grades that they earned. Um, so just a way to help communicate the value of the library to the success of our students. So all of these recipes are really quick and easy, two page reads, um, and then you can easily implement these techniques in your own projects. Thank you. Um, I guess for either of you, did you, um, anything you learned about writing or like trying to write in such a concise way, any advice for anyone else who's uh, coming up on a project like that of their own? Well, for me, I would say um, I am not a very good writer. I think that's one of my fears. And if it wasn't for Kate's assistance, I probably would not have done this. Um, she was very helpful in getting it um, organized. Um, helping me say what I wanted to say. I mean, she knew me well enough. We could have a conversation and she could say, oh, well, you want to say blah, blah. And it, I think it worked very well for me. Um, but like I said, if it wouldn't have been for her, I don't know if I would have tackled this. But they also kind of gave us a format, mm -hmm. you know, kind of what we're looking for. As we said, it does follow the format of mm -hmm. a recipe. It's not meatloaf, but it's kind of a recipe, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. so. How about you, Katie? I think the advice that I could give, particularly to students or folks who haven't um, you know, done a writing project, I think it's really valuable to work with co-authors. Um, so if you're mm -hmm. hesitant about it, um, or you know, in the case with the 
recipe with Joyce, I thought she had a really great idea. And so she was able to bring the idea to the table and then I helped bring the writing piece to the table. Um, so it, it's a really good exercise um, to you know, learn how to work with others and learn how you can blend your talents together to create something that is hopefully useful to others. Awesome. All right. Well, so this book, um, Joyce, I think you have our copyright. You know, yes, this yes. is the library copy. You yes. can see the little call number right here. Yes, it'll be on the seventh floor. And of course, if you can't find it, you can always talk to someone in the library staff. And Joyce and her students are pretty much pretty heavily involved in making sure those things are on the stacks or on the shelves when you need them. I'm going to flip the camera back around here. All right, so if you have any questions about um, the book or anything else, of course, you can always pop in and talk to us. Um, we're on the second and fourth floor desks, or you can always um, text a librarian or let us know if you have any questions. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.